you know, one of the things that I feel like being a librarian, a lot of people have to get over the hurdle of like really questioning, like, are you really a librarian? Yeah. You know, and and so I was like, well, you know, I want people to see kids as young librarians, mm -hmm. you know, so when they grow up and they're reading these books, they yeah. they already know when they go into a, a library, they you know, see a librarian that looks like them, and they just they're expecting it already. And so, so yeah, that was part of the, of, the, of the reason. The other part is I wanted to do something for my son oh. and, and kind of dedicate them to them. So. That's sweet. Yeah. That's really sweet. I bet um, I have a privilege. Sharing the good news that you can use as we talk community awareness and keep you in the know. I am Angela McNeil Woods, aliasly known as That Lord Hill Girl. And today, you guys, wow, I am so privileged, so happy, so overjoyed. I'm going to stop right there because you know how I can do That I have in the building Mr. Rodney Freeman, mm -hmm. but not just Rodney Freeman. Rodney V. Librarian, mm -hmm. author, speaker, philanthropist, and a dad to two beautiful kids. And I'll tell you, we, we can go dot, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, man, I'm, I'm super excited and I can't wait for, for those who do not know you to get to know you. You know, because um, me, me, I thank God for Google because I've been finding some wonderful people. And then the people, a lot of the people that we have already interviewed, um, you know, they sometimes they do referrals. And a lot of times it's just by happenstance of just meeting people. So I just feel like, you know, everything is perfect, yeah. you know, the way it is. Now I'm going to be able to know, is this home for you? No, no. My hometown is Chicago, Illinois. Chicago. Yeah. So it was a long story. So actually, my dad wasn't, uh, he wasn't military, but almost kind of was a little bit. He was engineering work for the government. So we moved around a ton. Okay. And so um, we, I have lived in Georgia before. I've lived, I've lived in like 11 states. Oh, really? And yeah, and then the last state before I moved here was in Florida. Okay. And then uh, my ex-wife and my daughter moved to Charlotte. And so I was okay. like, well, let me. Make sure I, yeah. I'm closer to her. Yeah. I love that. So, yeah, that's why I came here. But, that's good. But, yeah, my parents actually lived in Charlotte back in the early 2000s. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, they were, like, closer to me, meaning I lived in Charlotte for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And so, I I came in, in 1990. Mm -hmm. So, I got a chance to see Charlotte grow. And I still love the Queen, but I, I tell you, if I see one more apartment, I'm going to call the man. <laughs> Be ready for me by the way, because I'm, you know, it's a lot going on, yeah, you know. Yeah. It brings the crime and all the extra things. I, I see a lot more, uh, even since I've been here for two years now, I've seen yeah. a ton of townhouses being built. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah. And a lot of them are not full, so it's like, uh, what y'all trying to do? You know, but build the roads, you know, the infrastructure to go right. with it. Right. You know, so. right. I ain't going to get on that. You know, I don't get political. So... <laughs> But I want to talk about first, because, you know, I know you are an author, you know. Um, you have written a book called Little, Little Rodney Librarian. Yes. Okay, so I want to ask you, were you a librarian before you wrote the book? Yes. You were? Yes. Okay, so was that your inspiration for it? Or? Partly, yeah. Uh, um, what, what it was is wanting to see more representation of, of black males in roles that are non-traditional, mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that I feel like being a librarian, a lot of people have to get over the hurdle of like really questioning, like, are you really a librarian? Yeah. You know, and and so I was like, well, you know, I want people to see kids as young librarians, mm -hmm. you know, so when they grow up and they're reading these books, they, yeah. know, they already know when they go into a, a library, they you know, see a library. 
librarian that looks like them, they they're expecting it already. So so yeah, that was part of the of the, of the reason. The other part is I wanted to do something for my son oh. and then kind of dedicate the book to him. So but, that's sweet. Yeah. That's really sweet. I've been uh, I have the privilege of knowing one librarian. She's from Chester County. She actually was at uh, what college was that? Uh, Win Winthrop here in, in, in Rock Hill. And, um, and then there's another gentleman, he's down high up here. I don't know his name, but the plan is to get you all together. Okay. So y'all can, you know, pow I would Let's love, love to have that. It would Let's be do it. awesome. You know, but one thing I know about y'all, y'all smart. Y'all are smart. <laughs> <laughs> smart people. Now, tell us about Rodney the Librarian. How, how old is he at, in this book? So it was roughly about maybe seven or eight. Yeah. And um, he's just a kid in the neighborhood who wants to help other kids mm -hmm. with the resources and books oh. and, and getting the book that they want to check out. You know, that's his mission is, yeah. is getting the book in the hand of other kids in the neighborhood. Okay, now he did not learn him trying to do the homework and stuff in the book. No. Okay. <laughs> not yet. That might be oh. uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> book three or four. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that would be good. I, I might get in on that. Wow, I love that. And so he has a friend named Chloe. Chloe, Chloe yes, okay. yes. So, so basically, Chloe um, is a. She's in the neighborhood. She goes to him. She needs help getting her brother a book, and he's the only one that can can get her this book. So basically, they go through this big adventure mm -hmm. um, on exploring what's in the library, but they do it in a non-traditional way okay. you know um, and they explore the book that she needs and I'm not going to tell the story That's right. yeah. <laughs> That's so, well. something happens yeah. uh, uh, with her uh, while she's exploring these, uh, a book for her brother so, oh, wow. yeah. that's good stuff now I, I love um, you know you telling the story about black librarians you know mm -hmm. and showing the contribution how it has shaped the profession. Oh yeah. And so, if if someone wanted to become a librarian, what what is the process? Is you know what degree of education? Yeah. So yeah. So basically, to be a credentialed librarian, you do have to go and get your master's degree. Uh -huh. um, but I, I will say there there are a number of programs mm -hmm. and inroads that you can apply to become like so you can start off say like. If you start off in the library as a person who puts books on the shelves, mm -hmm. um, typically sometimes libraries have programs to kind of, you know, get you on the track to becoming a librarian. Okay. Um, or there are, you know, of course, uh, there are schools that will allow you to hopefully, you know, get like a scholarship or a fellowship. Mm -hmm. So you can go out and get a job and then continue to, you know, uh, work at your your degree at the same time. Okay. So, but yeah, you do need a master's degree in, in um, librarian, and mm -hmm. they call it master's in information library science. So when I was going to school, it was just mm -hmm. master's in library science. Now it's information in library science. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Now you have been capturing data, mm -hmm. and and you is this separate from you being a librarian? Is this part part, uh, part of your work? project that you have going on. Tell us about that project. So the project is, are you a librarian? It's a documentary. Okay. And, and basically what we've been doing is capturing um, all of the oral histories of uh, retired librarians, current librarians, um, librarians working in academic settings, special libraries, public libraries. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is really we want to tell the, the history yeah. of, of black librarianship. And we also want to show the contemporary what black librarians are doing today. So those are the two parts. Okay. That's basically it right there, right? But it's, it's a lot of meat in between there. So mm -hmm. with the history of black librarianship, a lot of people don't know the, the, the innovations, the, the mm -hmm. accomplishments that black librarians have yeah. um, basically given to the profession. Like uh, a lot of people don't know about Augustus Baker, who was a black librarian who helped start Sesame Street. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people don't know about E.J. Josie, who was a black librarian who was really good friends with Martin Luther King and was mm -hmm. really, while he was doing the civil rights movement, E.J. Josie was working on civil rights for, for black librarians at the same time. So it's, it's, it's a ton of other mm -hmm. uh, stories that we can talk about. Um, but, you know, a lot of the, the pop 
policies and the way that libraries are shaped today actually yeah. come from how libraries dealt with black folks back in the day because in unfortunately in, in, you know we there were laws saying that we couldn't read right. that we couldn't write um and black librarians when it gets the grain to collect the material collect the mm -hmm. the, the books to preserve them but also to help teach you know black people you know literacy mm -hmm. so so yeah now and so in capturing the data is what 3d Mm -hmm. Digital, um, in the photos and what else? Um, the extra that you guys are doing for us. Yeah. So, so with the with that with the documentary, we we're doing. We are capturing the oral history, and we, we do have photos that we're go, we're going to gather. Mm -hmm. um, we also have video footage, B roll that we're going to use. Um, so all that. The archives basically is the hub for us to go and make sure that we have all the the the, the footage, the data, the mm -hmm. images, so we can compile this this documentary. Um, yeah. Wow. Now, um, so you have also a nonprofit. See, I've been noticing. You, mm -hmm. you have a nonprofit. It's in what Darlington, South Carolina. Uh, no, I don't have a uh, nonprofit in Darlington, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. However, I am helping a nonprofit. In Darlington, South Carolina, mm -hmm. there is uh, it's called the uh, Cultural Realism uh, Complex Incorporated, and this lady uh, that I met, I mm -hmm. met her through a daughter, and she was basically a, a county commissioner mm -hmm. of Darlington, and she started like five centers to help preserve Black history yeah. and teach Black history. So I am helping them to kind of capture. You know, preserve their, mm -hmm. their images, and we did a short documentary for her. Mm -hmm. She she just turned ninety, wow. you know, the other day. But she has a long. I mean, she has put up like she was really a she is a big figure in that community. She yeah. made sure she put up markers for wow. the certain Black history that has happened around town. Mm -hmm. um, she ran for mayor of that of Darlington. So, mm -hmm. okay, wow. yeah. so so it was I met her daughter uh, Iris when I was working at Tennessee State mm -hmm. and um, you know she would always tell me about her mom and I was like well however I can help you know yeah. and yeah and and we we got together and we started and she was like well I need you to come and see what we have and I was like okay well I can get some of these scanned for you and maybe let's try to tell your mom's story mm -hmm. so we can make sure we can preserve that and People know about her yeah. story, so we're working on that too. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it, so that's that'll be soon. Yeah, that's okay. soon. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. good. That's yeah. good because and I, I want to say when I was looking for something for Juneteenth a couple of years back, I ran up on that story about her. Mm. You know, and her the different struggles that she's had. Yeah. So to hear you talk about it, it's like wow, it brings it you know on yeah. into fruition. Yeah. It's like okay, good. This is this is gonna be really good. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, I think I was trying to listen to some type of codes that you were talking about for librarians. What is A-R and B-R? A-R and B-R. Is it cataloging? Is it is some type of cataloging? A-R, oh, A-R, uh, augmented reality and uh, virtual reality. I tell people when you get this right. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, so uh, augmented reality and virtual reality is basically you know, people are using these headsets, right? Yeah. And so, and basically the virtual reality are these 3D objects. Uh, if you see, I don't know if you're uh, uh, Roblox or mm -hmm. some of these other games that, you oh, know, they look- Scary games. <laughs> it's, oh my goodness. It's not really that scary, but what it is is just like, <laughs> it's, it, it is, uh, it's games that are different from what I was oh, thinking, yeah, right? Yeah. But I mean, yeah. So you use these headsets and you put it on. And you're in this virtual environment right. that's kind of made of three D objects. Right. right. Okay. So uh, augmented reality, though, is where you actually are putting on the headset, but you can see through, mm -hmm. like you see this room here. Mm -hmm. But then you have three D objects layered on top, so you can put like a whole map, three D map, on top of this table. Wow. You know. So it's you know. So yeah, we're doing mm -hmm. what I'm doing with the. the the databases where we're exploring with augmented reality and virtual reality. Okay, so so let me share it because I had never heard. Now I just learned about Minecraft a couple years ago. Right. You know, Minecraft is a big kids. One. That's one of our favorite yep. 
uh, face paints, okay? Yeah. Now, <laughs> but when it, the ro Roblox, yeah. when I Googled that and I looked at one of the, the games, yeah. I was kind of bothered, you know? Yeah. And uh, I asked the mother, I said, you sure you want me to face paint the kids like that? <laughs> and she said, yeah, oh, it's, it's fine. And uh, but unfortunately, he, he changed his uh, thing to, to, to a different character, yeah. which I was glad, you yeah. know? But, uh, so I'm learning a lot about this new reality stuff that they have, you yeah. know, kids um, have going on. Yeah. I'm glad we still have Batman and Robin, you know, simple <laughs> things in life. <laughs> but thank you for informing me about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. And, uh, and so now, so you say you're a speaker also. Sometimes I, I mostly talk about the projects I'm working on. Yeah. Um, I haven't really just given a talk about, you know, topic that was kind of not related to that yeah. so yeah but you know I do talk about librarianship and mm -hmm. what brought me into the field and yeah. you know why I stay in, in the field why I feel like it's important for people to, younger people to know about librarianship because it's really powerful once you start mm -hmm. understanding that you know you have to be able to find and access information yeah and if you it's 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 like if you create all this information but don't know how to go about finding it and retrieving it, it's just gonna sit there. So that's all right. That's all right. Um, yeah, we, we're sharing a space, you guys. So <laughs> I mean, forgive us for the blooper moment. And so <laughs> and she's excited. Yeah, but it's okay. Yeah, and um, I, I love it. I love it because I mean I've never just truly sat down other than the, the lady that we know. In Chester County, mm -hmm. and had this conversation, um, but I've been wanting that to, to get her on, you know, mm -hmm. so we can talk about it. Is, is, a, is it a number sticking to? Do you have to like be mathematically smart? Because it's a lot of numbers when y'all, you know, are signing all these, you know, projects and books and stuff. And you gotta go to the right place. I would, I would say you have to kind of know a little bit about everything. Okay. Right? You know, it depends on what level and where you're at you're at in the, in the library, right? Okay. You know, so, I mean, there are some people who specifically only do reference, some people who do catalogs, so put the numbers on the book, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, compile the information about the books, and then you have management, right? And then you right. people are super, supervisors. You have uh, administrators, you have directors. So yeah, you, you know, the, and they deal with, you know, politics and, mm -hmm. you know, stuff that, you know, typically you wouldn't even think a library a librarian actually deals with. So yeah, yeah. So yeah. So, so yeah. when you started out, how did you? Where were you when you initially started out? I initially started as a page, so that is the person who puts books on the shelf. Okay. Yeah. So I started at the, the very yeah. bottom. I started putting books on the shelf. Somebody pulled me to the side and said, "Hey, I think you might make a good librarian." I said, "Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm not going to be a librarian." <laughs> Um, I want to go to law school and, um, and you know they talked to me and said you know I think you would and maybe you know you can go for, apply for this fellowship and, yeah. and, and I did and kind of went from there I started off as a cataloger when I got into the profession mm -hmm. and then most of my career has been in management okay. um, and now I, I'm in archives um, doing my day job at the UNC so, so do you go out and train others what you I will, yeah. We have done some outreach. Um, I have done, I've taken some initiatives to kind of go out <laughs> on on certain projects back in the day and yeah. try to talk to people about uh, digital preservation. That's my passion. Yeah. You know, knowing that, you know, even though you have a physical item, mm -hmm. you might want to make a backup copy of it and yeah. preserve it so you can keep it for future generations. So, so yeah. That's good. Good. Because now tell me about powerful women of color. How did this come about? So Powerful Women of Color is, is the second database that I created. Okay. The first database was Black Male Archives and Powerful Women of Color, I wanted to, I really, I, it was some back and forth on, mm -hmm. on the name, on we, should we just focus on, on just black women? Mm -hmm. And I, I told, you know, some of the people, I was like, well, my mom is not, you know, she, she's a black woman, but she's a woman of color. She's, mm -hmm. you know, she's mixed. So yeah. I want to make sure that, you know, all women of color were represented. So, yeah. um, you know, my dad is a black man, so that's mm -hmm. why the Black Male Archives was, 
was there. So, yeah. so, um, so yeah, so that's kind of how Powerful Women Color is really the sister platform to mm-hmm. uh, Black Male Archive. And basically what we do, we capture all these positive stories okay. um, about uh, women of color, mm-hmm. black men. And, and it can be from anywhere. It can be from anywhere. Yeah, okay. we've gone with the, with the, it, the only criteria is that it's, you know, it edges on, on, the, on the positive side. Right. Like, yeah. You know, we do have some, you know, stories in there that say this person was in jail but was exonerated or whatever. We yeah. see that as a positive story. Oh, yeah. You know, somebody who's um, who's overcoming something. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's something is educational, we make sure that we put it in there. But it's really we don't. I don't focus on you know uh, stuff that you know, somebody got yeah. shot or you know yeah. something right. dealing with yeah. the police because I feel like. The news kind of takes yeah. care of that angle. You know? I wanted to make sure that we focus on on positive stuff. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah, that's what powerful women of color is. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, one of my um, authors that we recently uh, interviewed, um, Jason Huey. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big ups. Yeah. yeah. I like Jason, <laughs> we, Jason a lot. I appreciate it. Yep. We we actually went to a couple of events, and when he saw us, he said, "Are y'all stalking me?" <laughs> He's a really cool he guy. Is. That hat is perfect for him, yeah. you know. But, you know, talking to him, our schedule was kind of off at one point, so we didn't get together initially. And, uh, but I'll never forget that when he, he seemed kind of like shy. He's not shy at all. So, and I found that out by your interview that you had with him. Yeah. And when I said that, I was like, wow, he's really... <laughs> You did the business, yeah. you know. It was it was so good. Yeah. And from there, I just fell in love with your podcast, which is Black Male Archives. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I love that you're you know you're promoting positive stories about black men. Yeah. So tell us about Black Male Archives. Yeah, yeah. So Black Male Archives started off in 2018, and I was going through some stuff when I was working in Chicago. So I was a assistant commissioner. And so basically what that means is that, so think of the, the Forbes 100 companies, the top companies, right? And then you compare that to libraries, right? In the mm-hmm. library world, in public libraries. Mm-hmm. So Chicago Public Library is like number three or four when it comes to yeah. public library system. Right. It's a big system. Um, and so I was number four in charge. I ran the Harold Washington Library Center downtown. Wow. 200 people up under me, six mm-hmm. different department heads, and I was going through some heavy, like, um, I'm just going to call it what it is, it was some racism, you I'm know, I right was, I was, I was in the system for three and a half years, mm-hmm. two and a half years, I was at the um, Woodson Regional Library, mm-hmm. and then I, I was promoted to the downtown library, and then it was just like, it was like the world just flipped, you know, yeah. I, I was... I was doing my job, I was doing good stuff. Yeah. And then I come downtown and I dealt with all of this stuff. Yeah. And so, you know, after I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, people just have so many misconceptions of black men. Mm-hmm. You true, know, true and, and we started off with more to just to focus on black men in the information profession. But we was like, like, black men are going through this, whether they're librarians, engineers, yeah. teachers. So that's when we created the Black Mill Archives to capture these positive stories. So yeah. hopefully we can show people that, hey, there's more to us than just yeah. what you see on the what news. What you see on the news or the videos. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. and I, I definitely want you to come back. I know I'm speaking earlier to get into existence because I, I would love to have you and Dixon Hugh because you know his books talk about 100 things um, mm-hmm. black boys you know, should know and then he's got 97, yeah. he's got a lot of what he has done. And he yeah. recently, um, the one he talked about, um, 297. Yeah. And uh, I would just love to have you and maybe a couple other guys just to talk, you know, because it's a lot of hurting going on yeah. in our community. And it's not just, I mean, you know, um, black families, but, but our, our younger youth, you know, we really need to, to reach them because it's, it's, it's a lot of mental illness going on. It's, an, it's a lot of deaths going on, you mm-hmm. know. And um, I think that would be so good and so powerful, you know, if you guys could yeah, do that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> now, um, with your black archive, with your with your podcast, you know, we've been having some interesting conversations. Like you were talking about, 
resisting Jim Crow. What was that like, you know, to have that come? I forgot the, the, uh, the lady that she was talking with, because it was so deep. So she was researching her family history. Okay. And I think that's what it, what it was. She was researching her family. I did that a while ago, so I'm, I'm not all the way fresh. But mm-hmm. she was researching her family history, and I met her at, a, I think, an author's event. And she was telling me about the story about, you know, yeah. she found a diary and wanted to basically... Uh, put the book out and not really not do anything to it as far as like I think she wanted to just make you know some small edits yeah. but she wanted to put it out there to see to show people black life um, I think that's the one I think mm-hmm. it was uh, during that time yeah 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 I, I would not even want to imagine you yeah. know and then and it was in Charleston South Carolina wow that's crazy yeah, yeah. And, and like we were talking earlier about Rockfield having uh, the history that it has, you know, and um, and then you, um, I think you were speaking with someone in regards to Black Inventors Hall of Fame Museum. Mm-hmm. What yeah. Is that? yeah, so they're making them. Uh, they're doing a museum in, I think he was out of New Jersey. Okay. And he was basically getting together. He did a he did a documentary as well. Okay. With people like the person who created um, uh, Fetty's Ten. Which is a card game. Yeah. Yeah, it was a black man. That was him? Mm-hmm. And I played that game. I used to like that game. And it's a there's a couple other games that I think he he I can't remember off the top of my head. But he, he set them down and did a documentary mm-hmm. and then from there they wanted to start um, a black inventors Hall of Fame museum. That um, is so awesome. Yeah. That, and then you know there was so many more. I was like, Well I gotta cut my face because yeah. I didn't care away with that. Oh yeah. Oh, now yeah. and then your topic, black Facts matter. Mm. Where were you going with that? That's that's deep too. Mm. So, Your title would be like, oh. <laughs> so that was um, the gentleman out of New York, uh-huh. um, and they created what was the website? I don't want to say. Was it Black Facts? It might I have think been. So, yeah. I think it was Black yeah. Facts. Yeah. So he had an interesting story because he told me about something that I didn't really realize. Mm-hmm. He was telling me about the start of the internet. Like when you, when people talk about the start of the internet, who do you think of? Steve Jobs. Yeah. Uh, what's the other guy from Microsoft? Uh, Gates. Bill Gates. Yeah, yeah. Right. But you don't really think of anybody black. No. But he was telling me that yeah, there's this book called Black Software. Seriously. And yeah. it talks <laughs> about the founding black people that were part of the internet back in the day. When you had black voices at Yahoo and stuff like that, well, he was in the mix with them. Um, so that company that he started mm-hmm. is, is back from like the nineties, wow. right? You know, so um, that was really interesting just to have that conversation with him. Mm-hmm. You know, and like again, that's another documentary that I think needs to be done because yeah. a lot of people don't know that. You know, when they when they think of the you know the internet, they they think of this young white guy who's yeah. an entrepreneur, you yeah. know, and, and but there were black folks there too, mm-hmm. you know. So right. so yeah, we've yeah. been doing some things. Yeah, you know, we've been doing some things, and it's, it needs to be told about. It. Yep. And that was the whole concept with Famous for Love podcast because yeah. we want to celebrate, promote, and support. You know, yeah. Um, because a lot of times, you know, we we well we love our celebrities. Mm-hmm. We go to the celebrities, but it's a we all know a lot of awesome people, mm-hmm. right? And um, we're going to tell our story. Exactly. So that's what it's about. And I love, I love your podcast. Well, thank you, so, thank you. I, so tell the world where they can find you you're on your social media platform. Yeah, so I have uh, <laughs> the, the main one that I'm working on right now is uh, Are You a Librarian? Okay. Um, because that's the, the documentary. That's what we're trying to go right now. So, um, Black Male Archives, we're still putting stuff into the database. Powerful Women of Color, mm-hmm. we're still putting stuff into the database. But we're on Instagram, uh, Facebook. Um, you can also find find us on LinkedIn. You can find me on okay. Rodney Freeman on LinkedIn. Right. Okay. Um, but yeah, we have websites. Uh, Black Male Archives has its own website. Okay, Powerful Women of Color. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a third database that's coming online probably next year. Sometimes called History's Playground. Okay. which will be all of our content together. Um, our 
ARB our content, uh, Black Human Archive content, everything that, that we've created. You can keep us reading. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's my mission. That's <laughs> good. I love it. I love it. And um, so, all right, and, and your book can be found on Amazon. Yes, it's on, it's on both books it can be found on Amazon. Um, Little Rodney the Librarian mm -hmm. and then Daddy Let's Play. Um, of course, the Little Rodney Librarian is dedicated to my son and the Daddy Let's Play is dedicated to my daughter. Okay. So, so, yeah. Now, which one was first? Daddy Let's Play. Oh, yeah. love it. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad you told me that so I can get that one too. Wow. Now, if you had a chance to, to speak on anything today, is there anything that you would love to address? Um, it's on your heart and mind. You know how to pass it. Like, if you want to testify, this would be a good time for it. For just, uh, just to get some inspiration. Right, right. I think, I think it's really not allowing people to put us, black folks, in, in, in a box. You know, not allowing other people to, to tell our story and you know, or take our story, then go monetize it. You know, um, I have been told with this journey that I've been on, mm -hmm. when I've tried to, you know, talk to people about the Black Male Archive database, that it wasn't valuable. Wow. You know, so I feel like, but, you know, again, that's my upbringing and where I came from. Mm -hmm. um, I used to, I'm from Chicago, but, you know, we had roots <laughs> in, in Kentucky. Okay. And so every summer we would go down to, to Henderson, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I would go through my, my great aunt's doors and she has this picture of our great great grandfather. And we always were told the story that, mm -hmm. you know, he was a slave, but he basically started his own business because he had a piece of gold and started his business from there. So I had that embedded in my head since a kid mm -hmm. about this man. So like when I was going through that stuff in Chicago mm -hmm. and Somebody told me that I needed to be grateful because you were in this position. I said, no, I don't. And you know what? You didn't have this job. <laughs> because you. unless you my mom, unless you God, my mom, dad, yeah. I don't, you know. So, but again, that's instilling these these stories of mm -hmm. resilience and, and what we've gone through. And I, I want everybody to know that you have your own story yes. that you can lean on. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And yeah. it needs to be heard. It needs to be heard. You know, um, oh my God, that's, that's really good. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love uh, Dr. Miles uh, Monroe. Mm -hmm. um, and when he spoke about when uh, people, when they, you know, go to the grave and they take all of these gifts and talents, you know, with them, that's not what we want to do. We want to tell our story. We want, we want the world to see the talents and the gifts. Yeah. And so I want to thank you. For like what you're doing, first and foremost, because you know we're gonna add historian on there too. You know, well, so we may have to come to you for some for some things and ask you some questions. Right? Yeah. So you're gonna come back on? Yeah. Anytime you want me to come back. We would love it. Let me know. I appreciate it. this. Thank you so much. No, you are so welcome. Yeah, we yeah. thank you. And all right, you guys. So I uh, hope you got all of that information. If not, trust and know it'll be in his bio that will be attached to this video. Again, this is Mr. Rodney Freeman. All oh, much respect, much love. Oh my goodness! And um, make sure that you Google him. Find out anything that you need to know, because he knows <laughs> he's a librarian, okay, and author and speaker. And by far, uh, I'm sure you're an awesome dad. But I try to be. You know, yeah. sometimes like, there's no there's no playbook to it. So <laughs> I get it wrong sometimes, but I I, I I can say this though. My dad showed me how to be a dad. Yes, you know, sir. That was that was really. Important. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, I definitely want to come and be with my daughter. So, and then my son, you know, he's two and talking and all this other type of stuff. Yeah. Well, I hope you stay in the point. You know, we, we need yeah. you here. Yeah. We, we really, really need you here. The world, yeah. the world needs you here. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm so proud of you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. All right, family. You heard it. Local, not local. We're famous around these parts. Y'all be blessed.